Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Autism Stories. I'm your host, Doug Bletcher, the founder of Autism Personal Coach. Autistic people are the true experts of the autistic experience, and Autism Stories is where we interview autistic people to learn from their stories, experiences, and get their insights. If you would like to be notified about each week's episode of Autism Stories, we suggest you subscribe on your favorite podcast listening platform. We would also appreciate it if you could give us a positive rating and review as it would help others to learn about autism stories. On today's episode, Rowan Tafaha joins us to discuss being the lead singer in ASD Band and about their upcoming second album. We hope you enjoy today's conversation. Rowan, thanks so much for joining me here on Autism Stories. Thank you for having me so much. I'd like to start off by learning about your story and where would you say your story in the autistic community begins? Well, I was first diagnosed with autism, you know, because of my behavioral issues. And when I was one year old, then when I was four, I had delayed speech. And my parents, they first assumed I was deaf, but thankfully this wasn't the case when, you know, the doctors uh, heard me singing My Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion. Talking about singing, you are the lead singer of ASD Band, and in April there will be a documentary about your band release titled uh, ASD Band the Movie, and the, the promotional poster for the documentary states what sets them apart brings them together. So what's been your experience in collaborating in what has brought you as a band together where all of your members are autistic? I'll be honest. I had a really great journey so far. ASD band has its ups and downs. And on top of that, being autistic has a unique dimension to our creative process. For example, like, you know, we're bouncing ideas for our original songs left and right with, you know, effective communication. And we want to overcome the stigma of autism. Like, we performed in Niagara Falls, you know, for last season's Canada's Got Talent. And it really was a magical night when we got a standing ovation and when the judges gave us four yeses. I was uh, in Niagara Falls over the summer and uh, just love, love, love being there. It was my second time there. Talking about Canada's Got Talent, um, you know, you mentioned being the ASD band being on on that show where um, all four of the judges praised uh, your audition. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience and if there are any ways that the audition um, you think will impact ASD band moving forward? I'd be lying if I said that I was fine not advancing, but I sure wish we did make it further, but it wasn't our call. However, it reinforced our impact of the music, and it got us to motivate us even more to know what we are doing in the first place. Like, it got us to continue on with our passion. Like, ever since then, we're hard at work at creating our second album to be. And we are excited for its release coming, in addition to our documentary, ASD Band, the movie. I watch all, I watch America's Got Talent, and uh, so I watch every episode each year. And, you know, I think Howie Mandel is, I think he's turned into maybe the most critical judge on at least the America's version, but he was also on the, uh, I saw he was on the uh, Can Canada's Got, Got Talent version, and he really, even though you didn't move forward, maybe it, as far as you would have liked, he really praised your band and had some really wonderful things to say about you. Yeah, it was a really, it was really great appearing on it, and even being aired too, for that matter. Now, on the same day your documentary premieres, the second album of ASD Band will be released. Can you tell? our listeners, uh, what they can expect from the second release. Our second album is something we poured our hearts and soul into doing. And we have like, you know, a wider range of the, of songs such as uh, strange ones, love song, a love song and angsty breakup song. And they have positive vibes within them too. I wanted to specifically ask you about a song you wrote for the upcoming album titled uh, Save Your Money. 
I know for a lot of us being autistic, it impact one of the things that impacts is our relationship with money. So I was wondering if that's been a factor in any way with you, how you value or spend money. Like until now, we're struggling to make ends meet. And our goal uh, within the band is to make a stable income doing what we love and enjoying uh, what we do honestly. And our route to financial stability isn't really easy, you know, working with the arts. But funny enough, with the song Save Your Money, I recommend that, you know, you listen to the song. And it's my biggest wish that we have someone who could support us financially to keep us going. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I have dreams that, you know, we we go through, uh, you know, a world tour, like through all the provinces, all the states and even worldwide. As autistic people, it may be difficult for others to understand our emotional state. So um, thinking about that, I saw you recently saying your favorite song, Fine on the Outside, at an open mic night. What is it about that song that you uh, fell in love with? That song, uh, Fine on the Outside by Priscilla Ann, it was from my favorite Ghibli movie called When Marnie Was There. And I feel like I relate to uh, the character Anna because uh, she struggled making friends and, uh, and also, uh, you know, and the fictional character Marnie herself, uh, you know, she deserved happiness too. Uh, for example, I struggled make, with making friends and right now, uh, the depth of, I love the depth of the lyrics and the beautiful melody that was associated with it. And uh, right now I'm in uh, a different, I'm in Metalworks Institute and I've made a lot of friends uh, there and I don't know how uh, things would be if without them either. And it's, it's the forefront of autism because, you know, we have difficulties with the friendships and relationships aspect too. And I hope that, you know, we can overcome this as well. So, yes. To me, I think like a lot of times us following our, our passions kind of helps with um, the dynamics of developing those relationships. How, how would you say that has music in, in any way, um, being part of a band, has that helped you? Honestly, it, it, it does help me. Like, you know, I don't, I cannot imagine my life without music. And uh, when we, you know, floated the idea of writing original songs, like my style of writing, it's like a non-fictional book uh, or a memoir, if you will. And I have uh, I've written my songs, you know, based on you know experiences I've uh, had, you know, during my childhood and present time. And uh, it's helped me, you know, put uh, put my heart and soul into what I write. And then lastly, how can our listeners learn about the ASD band, your documentary, and second album beyond this interview? Well, you can access our music on Spotify, YouTube, or Apple Music. And furthermore, you have exclusive early access to our movie now. You can watch the documentary on Show and Tell Films. It's only 10 bucks. And I'm sure that Doug Fletcher will share the link in the description of the podcast episode for you guys to check out. And I really hope that you enjoy it as well. Yes, we'll definitely share all those links in the podcast description. And uh, hopefully people uh, go and watch your documentary and uh, buy your second album. I really appreciate your time today, Rowan. Thanks so much for joining me here on Autism Stories. Well, thank you so much. I really had fun with this interview, too. Thanks so much to Rowan for the conversation. To learn more about Rowan and ASD Band, please check out the link in the podcast description for this episode. We always love hearing from you and would especially love to hear from you relating to this episode on what artistic musicians you enjoy listening to. Here at Autism Personal Coach, our clients are the experts, our coaches are the guides. The majority of supports for autistics are not helpful. They try to fix us, not support us. That's why many are confused when we say our clients are the experts, experts of their lived experience. Our clients are the experts for what has worked for them and about the things they need and want in their lives. 
our coaches first listen to our clients and then ask thoughtful questions, offer resources, and strategize with our clients so they can get what they need to thrive. Would you want a guide in your life to coach you to help you to get the things you desire? If so, then visit autismpersonalcoach.com for more information. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Autism Stories. And if you did, if you could tell a friend, Bo, or anyone you know about it so they could have the same enjoyable and educational experience as you would listening to Autism Stories, it would be very much appreciated. Until next time, I'm Doug Bletcher of Autism Personal Coach. Talk to you then.